Uh, my name is Bob Burr, and uh, I, uh, my grandfather lost his life on the Titanic, and he was a first-class saloon steward. The name is Yurt Burr. Well, since the uh, James Cameron came, film came out in '97, and I saw the film in '98, a uh, late mother said, "We've got some of grandfather's letters in the bottom of the wardrobe." So she fetched them out, and in the proverbial plastic bag, I opened up and read the first letter that was posted in Cobe, Southern Ireland, in uh, 10th of April, 1912, and started reading it, and it mentions that he's uh, on board and been home some time, and uh, went on the Titanic and served as a first-class saloon steward, and uh, he said it was on five table, and serving a very nice young lady, the Countess of Rothes. And uh, she very, he said he's a very a charming lady and uh, hoped to carry on serving on that table. And of course, when the Titanic hit the iceberg, uh, he obviously um, did what he could at the time, but lost his life, unfortunately. But. Uh, it's been known, well, my father actually known, allegedly, that he gave his life jacket up to a, a lady, but uh, my late uh, grandmother said that uh, she received a telegram from Bartholomew saying, uh, Burr, not saved. And there was a shock to obviously my late grandmother and the rest of the family. But in those days, uh, that disaster was kept uh, very quiet. Uh, you know, the media weren't so you know, uh, interested in those days, and obviously the only media in those days was the newspapers, and uh, it was more depicting on the rest of the disaster and and uh, the loss of life. No, I wasn't talked about so much, and uh, my late grandmother more or less told my sister and myself that uh, we lost grandfather in 1912, and. Uh, that's about all we can, all it was, you know, it wasn't elaborated at the time or brought to more attention. Well, he actually served, as I say, served on the Titanic and the first class saloon steward, but uh, I don't know what, you know, the story hasn't been, you know, the fact he didn't survive, he hasn't really, the family haven't got a story of what he did apart from allegedly gave the life jacket to a lady, but. Uh, where did, where, where did you where did you hear that from? Was it what, what's well, the, the source, if you like? Well, the father said that uh, he'd uh, heard that. Um, I don't know where he actually got the information from, but uh, it was allegedly that he, he gave his life jacket up. Whether it was another survivor at the, night, at the time, I don't know. But um, well, it came to us Ross uh, at the time was in, in the first class saloon steward on that five table and. Uh, I've, since then, I've met the late Lord Ross, and uh, we've been interviewed, and uh, I've actually seen the uh, the um, ne the pearl necklace and other artefacts that I've been very interested in, and uh, that's how it's gone on. And I've been uh, relating things to other, other parts of the Titanic and interest and other people. Well, I was talking to my mother one day, late mother one day, and she said, oh, she said, um, James Cameron film took, took, took our notice, and uh, she said, um, I've got some letters in the bottom of the wardrobe, I said. And uh, anyway, she fetched the letters out, and I pulled them out and noticed that one was posted in Cobe in Southern Ireland. It was Queenstown at the time, and that's called Cobe. And uh, 10th of April, 1912, and uh, was it... Titanic paper letterhead with a burgee on there, White Star, and it mentions that uh, he's on sea again after being home for some time, and then uh, he was on five t serving on five table on the first class saloon steward, and uh, serving a young lady, very nice, Countess of Rosses, and uh, hopes to carry on serving on that table. When you discovered those. What, what was that like? I mean, that must have been quite an amazing moment. Well, it was an amazing moment because when you, when James Cameron film came out and then they showed the shot of the first-class saloon and the uh, 
leading actresses and actors on a certain table, it uh, put to my mind that my late uh, grandfather could have been serving on that particular table. And it was a bit uh, mind-boggling or chilling, the fact that uh, there was a connection there somewhere. In the fact that he was in the saloon, the first class saloon steward, and the first class steward dealing with that, uh, the first class passengers. I imagine it, sort of, in a way, gave you a chance to kind of imagine what it must have been like for him, I suppose. Yes, it does give you an insight that in that particular time, when, in the Edwardian days, uh, that uh, the fact he was serving in the first class area, that uh, he was meeting aristocracy and uh, Millionaires, as such. And this is a copy of the letter here, isn't it? Would you, uh, do you feel able to, you might be able to, to read a, a little bit out? Well, I'll have a go. Anyway, it's, um, <clears throat> it was posted to 34 Victoria Road, Walston, Southampton, which he resided in. And the late uncle had a garage there, and I've got pictures of the garage, as it was. But uh, he resided in 34 Victoria Road, Southampton. April the t 10th, 1912. My own darling wife, here we are again at sea. It seems strange after so long home. Well, dear, I have had my first day in the saloon and it has been proved a success. I know, darling, you will be glad to know this. I have got a five table, one being the Count of the Ross. Nice and friendly, and very nice to run. I think I will keep this table. I shall have a very good show. I say, darling, I forgot. And uh, that goes on and finishes off. That, uh, and uh, it finishes off saying, Au revoir. Um, uh, Europe was masses across us, so it was a, letter, a love letter at the time. My late father was only two at the time, so, uh, you know, they obviously, it was a family feeling and uh, the disaster did affect the family ever since. And your, your grandmother never talked about it, but reading that and knowing that that was his, his final words yes, yeah. to his family, what, what's that like? for you to, to, to have it in your hand and, and read that and understand what he was thinking? Well, it shows uh, there's a family connection to do with the Titanic and it's very, um, well, I would say it was priceless information and uh, I'm very proud that uh, I've got, we've, we as a family got the letters and the artefacts in our possession. Well, that's all I heard from a from late uh, father that uh, allegedly he'd uh, given his life jacket up, which is made of canvas and cork and very heavy. But uh, he just, we heard that he lost his life, and uh, my late grandmother got a telegram saying, Bartholomew, uh, you are not saved. And uh, the impact on the late grandmother must have been absolutely horrendous. But um, being such a young age, only 28, and losing his life on the Titanic. When at the time, the Titanic was the largest liner afloat, and uh, no no uh, expense spared on the on the ship itself. And uh, how did your grandmother? How did it affect your grandmother? Uh, she kept very quiet about it. It wasn't any. It wasn't uh, elaborated at the time. And uh, of course, 99. Unfortunately, lost her life. Uh, when she was 98, and um, that was after you know after the Titanic the film came out, but um, what did she make of that? What she uh, well she wasn't alive. She, oh, she'd right, gone. Sorry, after, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, she'd uh, passed on before then, but uh, the rest of the family sort of realised that uh, that uh, we lost our grandfather, and uh, the research I've done is is proving more intense as we go on and uh, the interest global wise or worldwide is still alive and I think it'll be alive and kicking for some years to come. <laughs>